The cells in your body are currently making copies of themselves in order to replace old and worn out cells. This is called mitosis or simply cell division and hundreds of genes in our DNA are making sure that it happens at the right time and the right pace. First there's proto-oncogenes which are like the gas pedal of a car increasing the rate of cell division. Then there's tumor suppressor genes which act like the brakes. But DNA mutations can turn proto-oncogenes into oncogenes which are a hyperactive version of themselves while disabling tumor suppressor genes. Now, the gas pedal's being floored and the brakes don't work. Chaos ensues and cell division proceeds at an uncontrollable rate. Out of control cells affected by these mutations are called cancer cells, and they form tumors that invade healthy tissue. Enter our immune system's T cells, which keep cancer at bay by acting like bouncers at a club. Using their T cell receptors, they inspect molecules on cell surfaces called antigens, which act like IDs, telling the T cell whether the cell is friend or foe. But cancer cells produce PDL1, a protein that acts like a fake ID binding to PD-1 receptors on T-cells and disabling their anti-cancer response. Cancer has even more immunovating mechanisms, which is why we're forced to fight it ourselves. But targeting cancer cells without harming healthy cells remains a challenge. To overcome this challenge, let's head over to cancer's DNA. Cancer contains mutated genes that produce abnormal proteins known as neoantigens. Scientists can sample a patient's tumor and extract mRNA, which contains the genetic instructions for producing neoantigens. After sequencing, a machine learning algorithm selects a few that are predicted to best stimulate T cells and they're injected into the patient. On a cellular level, protein factories known as ribosomes use the mRNA as a recipe to produce neoantigens. Once produced, they form a complex with MHC class 1 molecules, which are like display stands on the cell surface that T cells are activated by. When a T cell recognizes a cancer cell's neoantigen, it releases perforin to form pores in the cell membrane. Granzymes enter through these pores, signaling the cancer cell to undergo apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. That's neoantigen-based therapy. It's more than just an interesting breakthrough. It's a beacon of hope for a future free of cancer.